to do that. Move forward, press forward. Don't get stuck in the middle. All right. Glory to God. Don't allow uh, uh, wrong perspectives and all of those things to get you or throw you off. Okay. Yeah. No, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Everybody say, don't do it. Say, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to focus, function, and finish. <laughs> Glory to God. Listen, there's two things that's going to going to raise you to the next level of prayer. And that's the love you have concerning others and, and the mission of Christ, uh, your family, your friends, your, your spouses, um, whomever God uh, 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 puts in your heart and pain. <laughs> Those things will push you to a level. Just ask Jesus in the garden. Okay. Most excruciating pain. And he was there and remained there because of his love he had for us. Okay. Love kept him on the cross. Okay. Even praying, you know, my father, my father, why have you forsaken me? But yet still he stayed on the cross. So those things will, will, will keep you there. All right. It will push you to your next level. And I want to encourage you, it's time for elevation. It's time for elevation. It's time to go to the next level. And I want you to rejoice. Don't be distracted. Don't get stuck in the middle. Okay, don't get stuck in the middle. The other thing that stuck out to us is, uh, listen, we're not evangelizing, we're lukewarm. And so let's not be lukewarm Christians. Okay. Amen. Y'all talk back to me. What does that mean? What does that look like? Do I understand? Do I know what evangelism uh, is today? Don't be lukewarm. Yes, mama. Well, what I feel, you, you speak to me, Bishop? Yes, ma'am. Um, what I feel like that means, at least what I believe that means is if we are to evangelize, then we are to we are to share the word, share mm -hmm. what we know. Um, don't be afraid to share it and use it. Use it. Use it. If we need to evangelize wherever we are, kind of mm -hmm. you know, live that life so that it can be seen as well. Yeah. Uh, everybody is not a pastor and a and a and a. And a ministers so the word may come out a little differently but as long as as it's the right thing and the and the same thing it mm -hmm. may be delivered a little differently but we still have to say it and we still need to live it to show it you know yes 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 all right. i'm stopping that's it. excellent I'm <laughs> that's excellent listen we all got to add to this okay because we got to paint a picture of what evangelism looks like and from each and every one of us it may take on a different flavor. As, as Mother Gorilla says, you may not be the pastor, you may not be the preacher or, or, or even the teacher, but we all have to allow this gospel to be preached. It has to preach, our lives have to preach. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, yeah. That ought to cause us to rejoice. And I think the first thing that has to happen is that we have to be clear and we have to believe that this gospel is the power of God unto salvation. It has to be the, the very, uh, uh, what I want to say, inspiration of evangelism. That is not because of me or not because of you, but it's because of the Lord Jesus Christ and the promises of God. And the incorruptible, indestructible seed of the word of God. Come on, Deacon Terry, your mic's open. Well, y'all kind of summed it up, but uh, that's <laughs> what I was saying. Uh, you know, you got to you got to live this life. You got to be an example. You got to be a walking epistle of the word of God. 
Uh huh. Uh, you said that uh, uh, evangelists are lukewarm. If you lukewarm, you're not going to live no holy life unto God. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're going to be straddled fence. So in order to evangelize life, you got to you got to live a life of Christ uh -huh. and you got to believe the word of God. You got to believe what the word say. And when you believe what the word say, you go be doers of the word. Okay. I mean, you go be an example to mm -hmm. others. I mean, you go walk in joy. I mean, you go be rejoicing mm -hmm. because you live a life of Christ. Like, you know, like mama say, you, you, uh, it's good to minister to people, but the first thing, you got to make sure you are living the life of Christ. You is that example uh, to the world uh, of Jesus, you know. People can see Jesus in you as you live that life, no matter what you're doing or, or, or where you're at or uh Wherever they need to see Christ in you. Mm -hmm. And the other side of that, we do need to minister to people. Every chance we get, we need to try to share the gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm. so, so, you know, there's a lot of situations and, and, and conversations come up, but in them conversation, we got to stay mindful that uh we need to be looking for opportunity to, to to uh, say something concerning whatever and whoever we're talking to concerning Christ. That's good. So and that's I, what I, in all conversation, and I don't care what it is, uh, I mean, in business transactions or, or whatever, uh, I try to stay in a place with Christ. So, I mean, I'm mindful that, that uh, I need to say something when I need to say it. Okay. So so that the word is a continuous power working in us. And it's always in in, in 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 order to do that, we're gonna have to stay in the word of God. If we don't read the word of God and stay in prayer, we're not gonna we get we're not gonna have a mindset to think that away and react that away. We just gonna go through life having conversation with people and leaving Christ out. Okay. So, so we're talking about with Christ, you go have that mind set and that mind frame. Okay. So those of you that's coming in, we're talking about not being lukewarm. And if we're not evangelizing, we're lukewarm. Even though we're going to all of the programs and we're doing our, our duties, as we call it, or playing our roles in the church and those things. If we're not evangelizing, we're lukewarm. We become complacent. Okay. And uh, and what does evangelism look like in this 21st century? Have we gotten any greater revelation or understanding of what evangelism looks like? How will God use your life to win a soul to Christ, uh, demonstrate the power of his resurrection, his ability to heal, to restore, to to uh, to save the loss? Uh, uh, you, you you understand what whatever whatever it is can he depend on you can he trust you uh with this gospel and so anybody else not being looking i seen your your mic open up a little bit more again mother irma Come i just on. want to stop real quick and say that when deacon said opportunity something hit me because there are so many times we come upon people just within our homes around and about us but just and, and especially him in, in his business. And so when you have an opportunity, sometimes it just presents itself right in your face. There you are face to face with it. Yeah. Then we have to really take those times to, that's when we open up the mouth or that's when we live that life in front of somebody. But it's those opportunities that, that we absolutely do have and they come anywhere. They'll come up at any time, anywhere. And that's why we have to not be lukewarm. We have to be ready and we have to know what we know and, you know, and be prepared to say it. Okay. It. This is good. Opportunity. Amen. And when preparation and opportunity intersect, we have success. And so Dick and Terry said, we got to stay in prayer. We got to stay in the word of God.
And when opportunities present in, in a conversation and meeting someone, meeting a stranger, uh, whatever it may be, dealing with someone that God wants to, 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 to reconcile or bring to him, you know, but it may not look as though it should look or whatever it may be. But can you do that? They were, they were challenged with Jesus because he's wouldn't sit among sinners. You know, different things of that nature. Are, are you, are we, are we mindful of going into the highways and the hedges and the byways, shaking the bushes? Amen. Because many times we're okay. This is something that came out of Africa again. Uh, man, we can hold, have a whole group of Christians together and boy, we can, we can do what we do and we can have all of our things. But yet there's so many that are lost. And if all of us who are Christians are really evangelism, evangelizing, what happens is the lost stop being lost. Does that make sense to you? And you can get complacent in that. Okay. So what does evangelism look like in the 21st century? Uh, you know, really, really, what does it look like? What does it look like? Okay. Come on, I don't want y'all looking like you're sucking on lemons tonight. I would say, Bishop, I think evangelism looks different in this 21st century because of the different lifestyles of the people that we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. um, we're living in a dispensation of time where people, uh, they don't have any reverence of God. Okay. Where you could say in... Uh, other centuries where there were some reverence of God, but now we're in a time where there's no reverence of God. So mm -hmm. evangelism is going to be different now because now it's like we got to cut through the mud. We got to <laughs> um, sow the seed. We got to get their grounds right in order for them to even receive. And it's like, um, I would say, I think this is me saying this now. I think it's going to take um, deliverance before we can even sow the word because we have a lot of demonic influenced people so I think it's going to take we're going to deal with the demons before we can even sow the word because the ground is not ready to receive mm. so because when you're trying to sow the word into somebody that hearts is hardened they're not receiving it okay and you can't I see you, hand, brother D. Okay. You can't preach on top of that. You can't sew on top of that. So we got to deal with this thing that's holding them back, so okay. they can receive. Okay. Well, one of the things that that happens, I believe, when it becomes in in prayer, when it becomes a burden, God also gives you some insight. Okay, he gives you some insight. He gives you. Uh, uh, how to address the resistance. Uh, you know what I'm saying? He, 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 because you, 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 you have such a burden. Burden is birthed in prayer because he begins to share his heart with you. And when he shares his heart with you, he also gives you divine strategies. You know, and he also can point out to you those whom he's prepared. Because this is what the scripture says to us. No man can come unto the son except the father draw him. So I believe that one of the things we have to do, and this is because we need Christ. It can't just be out of religious activity. It ain't just about passing out tracts and knocking on doors and saying, come to our church program and all that. This is really about the snatching of souls out of the belly of hell. And so with that, praise God. He'll send you like Jesus went to the woman at the well. He wasn't supposed to be talking to that woman. It wasn't customary for him to be talking to that woman. He shouldn't even been there at that time. But yet that's who that's where he was. And out of the 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 the, the you know gift of wisdom and a word of knowledge, he said to her the things that broke the the demonic influence that was upon her life. You understand what I'm saying? And that's what I believe, Pastor Sam, what happens. When we when we commit ourselves to saying, you know what, I can't be lukewarm. I, I have to 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 do this work of the ministry, the ministry of reconciliation and and go where I need to go 
talk with whom I need to talk to and do what I need to do in order to win the soul that God would have me to win to Christ right now. Does that make sense? I think sometimes we think in masses when God will, will be okay with one-on-one -on -one ministry. Does that make sense? It might be that person that he, he, he says, I want you to spend time with them. I want you to do this with them. I want you to show them love and kindness. I want you to teach them. I want you to do these types of things. And, and, and that requires sacrifice. Sometimes it requires your reputation. Sometimes it requires what you got to say to God, make me of no reputation. See, they, they made Jesus. They said, well, you, you ain't supposed to be with them. You ain't supposed to be sitting with them. You ain't supposed to be eating with the sinners. You ain't supposed to be talking to that woman at that well. You ain't supposed to be doing this. You ain't supposed to be doing that. Are you understand what I'm saying? So sometimes in modern Christianity, we've lost the passion for evangelism, and we don't want to get our hands dirty anymore. We're more concerned about ourselves, as Stephanie put up there, becoming selfless. We're more concerned about ourselves, reputation, all those types of things. So now the belief in that the gospel, the power of God is that we don't even go after the people that other folk won't fool with. We we, we want to do with that. And, and if you can be honest, I know with me, people don't want to fool with me no more. But yet God drew me to his son. Does, does that make sense to you? Amen. So 21st century evan 21st century evangelism looks different. I'm telling you, I believe this is my my conviction. I believe that we, we are primed and we are ready and we can ever just get this. I gotta go to Brother Dean first, Stephanie. We can we get this. We are ready for the the greatest harvest our generation has ever seen. And listen, I'm not talking about I'm not talking about people gathering in a, in a building. I'm talking about transform lives. Does that make sense? That will assemble themselves together. You feel me? That's going to uh, uh, take his yoke upon them and be ready to learn. And that means that you got to listen. You're going to hear people that say, I want to be taught. I want to learn. I'm learning so much. You, you got you to gotta, you gotta listen for that. Does that make sense to you? Okay. Come on, Brother Dean. And then I got to go back to Stephanie and Pastor Sam. Y'all keep your thoughts. Write notes down. Whatever you need to do. Don't don't forget it. Don't forget it now. Come on, Brother Dean. Well, Bishop, you, said I, you already said uh, what I wanted to say. I think that this time what we're looking for is authenticity. Right? Mm. Uh, we got a whole generation of people who grew up. I don't say, you know, 2020, you know, change, COVID changed everything, right? Mm -hmm. Folks are looking for an authentic relationship with God now. And what that means is we got to be authentic in our relationship also. Mm -hmm. um, something you said that was so, uh, <laughs> that I, I really believe in, and I don't know, y'all, I'm part of a fraternity. And one thing, is, one of the questions of fraternity is, what does it take to be a friend? And here's the, here's the answer. Your time, affection, patience, right? And, and not only that, uh, sometimes your life. What, what evangelism means is, will you sacrifice yourself when it's not about you, will you still yet evangelize? Mm -hmm. And that's what, and that's where the change is at. People, we don't care what you do. We don't care what you look like. I want to know who Jesus is. That's a whole different conversation entirely. That's okay. all I have to say. Please. Okay. All right. I want to know who Jesus is. That's good. And can you tell me? Can you show me? Can you show me what love really looks like? Can you show me what love and kindness I'm doing? Can you be kind to me even when I, I'm, I'm not kind or I'm not at my best? Will you invest time with me when nobody else wants to fool with me? Oh, my. <laughs> Come on. Can you handle me in my, in my distress? Can you handle me when I've lost sense of myself? I've lost my identity and I'm acting unseemly. Will you hold my hand and walk me through this? Ooh, we. Stephanie, they, they, ask, they, they said, do you really care? Do you right? really that, care? Do you really Ooh, care? That's good. <laughs> that's good. 
Come on, Stephanie. Bishop, I saw that post when you made that post, and I love that post. And when I did that, I started asking questions. I, I do tend to overanalyze some things. And I asked the question, Holy Spirit, what do you, you know, what do you mean and what are you saying? Mm -hmm. When you say, you know, when you're not evangelizing, you become lukewarm. And I was like, what does that look like? You okay. know, in our lives. And so okay. for me, I'm gonna talk about me. Okay. Um, when I'm not evangelizing, when I'm not, when my attitude is not right, or when I'm not showing forth the uh kingdom, the righteousness, the peace, and the joy, or when I'm not sharing the revelation that I have, okay. um, it keeps you in a it, it will cause you to be complacent and okay. it'll cause you to settle and be mediocre and before you know it and I really mean before you know it you will become oppressed mm. um, because the world is oppressive I don't care where you are what city ah. what state you are in the world is oppressive everybody's looking for the next financial gain everybody's looking for the next best relationship everybody's looking for the next best thing and okay. so if you are not sharing the love, the joy, and the truth, and the liberty of Christ, mm -hmm. you become lukewarm. And okay. I was like, wow. So that's what, for me, it sparked something in me to say, okay, do recognize your opportunities. Do be sensitive so that you can have a conversation. That's what evangelism looks like, having a conversation or gently correcting with love, okay. you know? Somebody may say, oh, something told me to call you when I had such and such. Not something. That was the Holy Spirit. That okay. was God. Being able to point out God in people's lives to make people more God conscious. I believe if we do that, I think that that's a point of evangelism sometimes that is often quite overlooked or maybe not as um, you know, grand or, 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 you know, the grandiose gesture. It's uh -huh. When you help people to recognize that God does love them. God does care about you. Um, God did move in your favor or, um, you know, new environment, new job, new workplace. Young lady said, oh, it's going to be a bad day. Things just starting off wrong already. And okay. I, didn't, I didn't rush to say anything I wanted to. The old me would have. Okay. But I got a little wisdom in, in, in <laughs> And um, when she came around me and I said, and sis, it's going to be a great day. Okay. Just rubbed her back and she said, you know what? You're right. It is. It's a great day already. Mm -hmm. you know, so that was evangelism. So yeah. I think that's a part of it, um, making people more God conscious. And I feel like when we do that, then alluding to what Pastor Samantha said, I think that then that is a preparation for preparing their hearts to receive the seed, the word of God. Mm -hmm. That's good. Come on, Pastor Sam. Okay, Bishop. Um, I had to write down my notes because so I <laughs> forget what you were saying. Uh, when you was speaking on uh, being stuck in the middle, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you become stuck in the middle because um, you've been doing a thing a way that you already been known how to do. Just like you said, uh, in the uh, early years, evangelism was uh, sewing tracks or CD ministry. Mm -hmm. But now we're in a time now where those things is not going to work now. See, these so, are obsolete. Yes. So uh, <laughs> that's stuck in the middle and you becoming lukewarm. It's not because I don't care that lukewarm is coming from. I don't know what to do. I don't. Oh, you're that's lacking, good. You're lacking wisdom in that area. So okay. it's not that I don't care or, or I haven't. Uh, be quiet. I haven't invested the time. I don't know what to do. Okay. And so, so that, that, like you said, that burden is going to require you to spend more time with God to get another strategy because th the method has changed. Mm. So we got to find out what's the new method, God, because we're dealing with a new, another generation of people. Mm -hmm. So we got to spend some time with the Holy Spirit and say, okay, what's the next move? Mm -hmm. How do I reach them? Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, also, too, I, when I was in LCU, we went through a class of uh, counseling. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to require us to invest the time in walking some people out of some places. Right. So that's going to require investment of time. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and uh, you're going to have to be in that place where um, you got tough skin. 
Because if, if, if you're touchy, they're going to say some things that are going to cut you. It's going to be sharp. But mm -hmm. is that going to make you stop? Yeah. So with that investment time, I mean, just like Monique said, hey, you, you, you talk to them and uh, uh, soothe the pain. But in that, in that uh, space, you're sowing. You're sowing into them. Okay. And, and, and you're dealing with that stony ground because now they're able to receive from you. Okay. So now you're showing them I really care. Okay. Yeah, you cut me, but I still care, and I'm gonna okay. keep coming for you. Okay. Because a lot of times we get cut, and we stop. Yeah. We quit. Uh uh. Yeah. Mm -mm. I can't deal with that because uh, they're not gonna disrespect me. No, 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 no. So that tells you too that you got to be and went through a place where you have been transformed, so you can deal with their their issues. Yeah. And that's why we're talking about prayer, because if you're praying one for another, what happens is when you're praying one for another, you can't be offended in praying for people. So we choose offense rather than pray. The Bible says pray for someone who despite you misuse you. Yeah, they cut you. Yeah, they did this. But if you will pray for them, sometimes what happens is God will say, yeah, I, I poked the bear because you are the one that I'm going to assign to them to bring them out and bring them through. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, yeah, they did. They did. They poked you. Yes, they did. Yes, it was wrong. But can you, will you, will you do what I ask in praying one for another so you can see something greater than what your flesh feels and what the human eye can see? Come on, does that make sense to you? Yeah, see, this is why evangelism, and as you said, this Pastor Sam, sometimes we don't know how to evangelize. You just become complacent. And you just don't do it because you become frustrated. You can do what was mimic what used to be. Like you said, CDs, you, you could just pass out a CD. Well, they obsolete now. You pass out a CD, somebody say, I ain't got no CD player. You know, everybody Bluetooth now. Everybody, you know, whatever, whatever. Does that make sense to you? So it's obsolete now. But if you continuously in prayer, he continuously reveals to you divine strategies. He points out the people to you that he would have us to sow into, invest the time, sow the word, teach all the things. Remember, I taught you all that you got to identify those that are ready to be taught. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so this is good. This is good. Come on, Stephanie. I was just going to say to what Pastor Samantha was saying, not only do you get a chance to evangelize them when they, like you said, when they poke the bear, that's <laughs> an opportunity for you to be evangelized too. And mm. I think we can't forget that our walk and our life is continual. It's mm -hmm. continuous. We are constantly being transformed and developed. And so just as we are giving, we are getting to it. I yes. mentioned to tell that to people like, you know, yes, I teach, but I'm also learning. And I am learning in the split second minute that I am Come giving. On. The Holy yeah. Spirit is ministering to me. Like, it's so amazing. And so we too are being evangelized. And so I see when you don't, you get lukewarm because when you don't evangelize and you don't give that, it, the word is not flowing through you. So it can't, you know, do what it needs to do. It's mm. coming in, it's going to cut going out. And so just as you are giving, you are also getting as well. Okay. So it has to come to you, get in you, and come yes. through you. Yes. That's and the full that's cycle. And yeah. that's continual. It never stops. You okay. made you made this one time before. You said get in private so that you can give in public, mm -hmm. and that's continual. Even as you're giving in public, that's when you put a, a demand on the gifts, and so now you can get words of wisdoms and words of knowledge. And people sometimes say, "I don't know how." I get that, Pastor Samantha. But sometimes we don't know how. Sometimes Bishop Gerald don't know how, but right. because of the Holy Ghost and because the people are pulling and because there is a word there for you. Because we were all finished before we got started. The Holy Spirit knows what is needed in every heart, in every person. And when you open yourself up to be a vessel, when you're yielded, God can give you what you need. 
Ooh, Come on. Praise God. <laughs> Let me mute this mic. No, don't mute it. Keep teaching. Also, I too, felt something. Oh, <laughs> oh that's the man. And also, too, just like Bishop, you were saying, when you poke the bear, mm -hmm. why were they able to poke, poke something in you? Come mm -hmm. on, talk about it. So when they're able to poke something, you, that's a place for you to, hey, I need to go to God because that touched me. Mm -hmm. When they, they touched me, when, when they said that, that hurt me. So now you got to go spend some time with God so that he can deal with that infirmity in you. So now I can come back out. I still can talk to you. I can do what I need to do. Okay. But uh, when, when you've been touched, you got to know, hey, I was touched right here. Mm -hmm. that, that's something that hadn't been dealt with. Something been overlooked in me. Okay. And so a lot of times when you've been poked, you like, oh, well, I ain't assigned to them because mm -mm, they, they rubbed me the wrong way. That's an indicator. Yeah, that, they rubbed you the wrong way because iron is sharpening iron. And you didn't even Ooh, realize it. Okay. And the only thing that can sharpen iron is iron. Mm -hmm. It has to be of the same uh, temperament. It has to be of the same, same uh, material. Okay. Because it can't be butter, it can't be wood. You understand what I'm saying? Because wood can't stand up to iron. Okay. And so, yeah, this is good. And and all of this is 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 for the betterment of everyone. This is how the world is transformed. This is how we create environments. No, no environment that should be will not be unless it's created. You got to create your world. You got to create your environment. Okay. Otherwise, you're going to be subject to uh, what's in the atmosphere. And, and as Christians, we can't accept that. Um, you know, we know we're supposed to create it. We're going to have dominion. We're going to have authority. And some of that has to do because the environment is people, places, and things. And sometimes the environment can't get right until a person or, or people get right. Because it ain't the building, it's the people in the building. It ain't the city, it's the people in the city. It ain't the job, it's the people on the job. Does that make sense? And so unless we that have understanding and revelation of that don't be lukewarm in evangelism, we just start canceling everybody out. And so now you don't have nobody that 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 for the workforce. You have nobody that, that you can call friend. You have no one that you can, you know, communities are to the place where you can't go nowhere anymore because everybody, you know, this and that and the other, this way or that way. And we just law, uh, uh, pick on the, the, the voices that are of the world. We label people, you know, we call them ghetto, we call them hood, we call them whatever, whatever, toxic, we call them whatever, whatever, instead of saying, okay, that may be where they are, but this gospel can, can bring them where they need to be. Does that make sense? And if we don't take and do that, then you're not going to have anybody. You're not going to have anything. Communities keep exploding and imploding and families imploding and all of that because we have to take this gospel to people because that's the only thing that, that transforms a life. It's the power of God under salvation. Does that make sense to you? Come on, Deacon Terry, your mic is open. Yeah, this is good, Bishop. I'm enjoying it. Uh, I'm going to go back to what Samantha was saying when she was saying about the poking. <laughs> People can poke you, but I mean, sometimes they can poke you pretty I mean, places that hurt real bad. I mean, it's different kind of pokings. But yeah. my question is, you know, and then they keep on poking you. I mean, it's a hard poke. <laughs> Uh, I mean, sometimes, you know, it'd be a process to, 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 to kind of move forward and, and, and pray for that praise. And with me now, I mean, I know I got the Holy Ghost, but I've been poked so hard, Bishop. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it kind of staggered me for a minute. But as I went to God in prayer and, and, and continued in God, I have now came to a place of peace in a place of prayer, but at the beginning, I was hurting. 
I got you. I mean, I, got I, just, you. I just, you know, I know she's talking about poking. It's depending on what you, how, what kind of poking that is. Like, <laughs> what kind of hurt they done put on you. <laughs> they put some on you. Huh? <laughs> some of them poke these stabs. So listen at this, listen at this. Here's a word I want to throw out to you all. Capacity. Capacity. Do you have enough capacity? Have you spent enough time with God to have the capacity you need to, to address the poking? Does that make sense to you? For God so loved the world, there was enough love in God that he gave his only begotten son. He sacrificed his son so that he could address all of our infirmities, our issues, our sin, our, our disconnect from him and hopes. He did all of that in love. It wasn't guaranteed a return now. Come on, because God shows us his love. He, he gave his son. The son sent the Holy Ghost. He left the word. He sent gifts. Apostles, the prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. He sent other men and women. Okay. But it's still a person's choice to accept it or not. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But if you don't have enough capacity, can I tell you something? Even, even if it's not accepted, do you have enough capacity? capacity to continue or was that all you had that was all I had in the tank that was all I had so I'm done I'm done evangelizing I'm done trying to be kind to somebody I'm done trying to to love on someone I'm done I'm done I ain't teaching I'm done you know I'm done that's a capacity problem You see, the Holy Ghost provides continuous power. Mm -hmm. And God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He never diminishes. So we got to recognize that when, when, when our capacity is low, we got to recognize that. And we got to go dwell in the secret place. As you was praying when you were praying and, and before we came on, fill us all over again. God, I, I, I leaked. I got fiery darts. I've been poked. I was leaking. I got leaks all over me. I got holes in, in, in me. And I've leaked. I need you to plug the holes. Heal every hurt. Come on now. Plug the holes and fill me again. Come on. But this takes maturity. To acknowledge, and it's enough people that are just that are lukewarm. You can just get with the lukewarm crew. You can get with the, I'm the hurt crew. You can get with the you know wh whatever excuse the enemy tells you to not become the very best you can be and do the will of God. You can get with that crew. That there's masses of people that that are doing that, but there's very few. The harvest is plenteous. It's just enough people that are willing to put in the work. Hello? <laughs> Come on, y'all keep on talking. So capacity. You got to know when my capacity is low. I'm lukewarm. Oh, I've, I've just sided with the enemy. I just laid on the sideline. I'm, I'm complacent. I'm embracing hurt rather than 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 healing i'm embracing lack rather than prosperity i'm embracing uh being being mean rather than being kind you know what i'm saying i, I have no patience rather than embracing patience i can't i don't have no long suffering i'm not talking about the fruit of the spirit now i i don't i can't i can't deal with with uh uh, uh, what is it? How was it called, Stephanie? What they call it? Uh, deal with uh, uh, people that are hard to deal with. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I don't. I don't have enough capacity. To, that's called long suffering. That's yeah. dealing with with people that's hard to deal with for for extended period of 
period of time. Holy <laughs> oh, See, that's a capacity problem. Yes, it is. Hmm? What if God wasn't patient? That's why he made a covenant with us that I won't destroy the world again that way. <laughs> I'm not going to let the flood come again. Okay. And so, come on, Stephanie, your mic is open. When you said that, when you said, you know, don't have the capacity, I remember one time, and I'll talk about me. I remember one time you asked me, um, you said, hey, you know, how how you feel about teaching? And I was like, mm -mm. Mm -hmm. you said, you need to go and pray again. You need to look again, daughter. And I was like, mm -mm. Uh, that the Lord ain't saying that to me. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was because I had been poked, beaten, stabbed, <laughs> broken. Uh, I had uh, bats upside my head and uh, and uh, I was dealing with some warfare and uh, selfishness and flesh and carnality mm -hmm. and oppression and all of that. Right. Uh, and so to have someone to ask you a question, you know, and say, you know, what you think about this? That's evangelism. Mm. And so that question pricked the Holy Spirit or pricked me, sharpened me to go back and say, okay, God, okay. And he did. He, the Holy Spirit enlarged my capacity mm. um, and reminded me of my why. I think sometimes too, the part of evangelism is to remind people of their why. Um, mm -hmm. remind them of why they got started or you know all of those things and so because we do we forget you 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 get beat and hit so much in that particular area you start saying wait a minute is this you lose your um stability and what's reality or what's fantasy like what's real and what's fake and you say wait a minute um but that's the the purpose of of that um the in our lcu syllabus it calls it something specific it says like it's many blows mm -hmm. that you get in this one particular place that that area yeah um, and that's that warfare that you got to identify mm -hmm. and you got to annihilate that and so yeah you got to go back and get that capacity but the holy spirit is the only one that can do that for you right and that requires our fellowshipping with the holy spirit that requires that's why we're studying about the 101 supernatural benefits of praying in the Holy Spirit, praying in tongues, fellowshipping with him, getting out of the conversation that's going on in your head, getting out of the conversation that's going on around you, getting out of the conversations of, of people that don't have the capacity so that you can have the capacity to change the people that you have to be around. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, because we got to create environments. This world isn't just going to accept what God has done through his son. Okay. And so those who he reveals, those whom he, 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 he graces. And Stephanie, you talked about, see, once you agree with what God said, there was a grace available that came. See, that's what happens when you come in agreement. By grace, you are saved through faith is nothing of yourself. But the first thing you have to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and then grace, the ability of God for you to live a saved life comes upon you. Grace is God's holy influence. You're no longer influenced by the past. You're no longer influenced by your flesh. You're no longer influenced by uh, 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 past feelings and those types of things. Now you're being influenced by by what the father wants and that creates a whole nother level of selfishness or selflessness i don't mean to say selfishness selflessness okay you'll go where god tells you to go you, you'll you'll invest in who god tells you to invest in rather than you doing what you want to do now god can say will you will you i had jesus said i have need to go to samaria why are we going to Samaria? What 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 what's in Samaria? What what what's up with that? That's where the father wanted him to go. You understand what I'm saying? And so 
these things uh, we have to understand and know. And the only way it happens is by fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now, one thing you got to understand that who or what God anoints you for and sometimes who God anoints you for, people don't understand. The one with the issue of blood, Jesus was anointed for her. She had spent all of her money, all of her time, been all the physicians, had done all of that. But it wasn't no one but Christ, Jesus, who was able to, to deal with that issue that she had, right? And sometimes you said, Pastor Sam, iron sharpens iron. There are some people that you're the one that God's going to use in their life to bring them to their potential. Does that make sense? We are all called to a people, to a place, okay? And there are some divine places, some divine people, some divine things that are for your life. And out of that, what happens is, if we'll just obey God, keep the capacity that we need. Everybody say capacity. And that means you got to uh, eliminate distractions, you got to stay disciplined, right? Okay. You got to stay disciplined. It's just like uh, we coming back from Kenya, I mean, from Togo, right? So we only 11 hour flight on this plane. I had to pray real hard, 11 hours straight. I'm talking about straight. Do you hear me? No break. You sitting in them seats 11 straight hours. Let me tell you what happened when I prayed. A grace came. My legs didn't get stiff. Come on now. It was so peaceful that we were able to sleep. Mm -hmm. Anxiety didn't happen. Come on. Can you imagine being in this little tight space for 11 hours? <laughs> but what happens is because we say yes there's a grace for the travel there's a grace for certain things and when God asks you will you do something for him there's a reward in it for you it ain't just one way it's called covenant <laughs> but it's in the secret place he reveals his secrets. And if you don't understand what God has purposed you to do, something or someone will give you purpose. And you may be, as you mentioned this, I think it was Pastor Sam or Stephanie, whatever, it may be materialism that, that keeps you. You'd be like, man, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm, I'm, I'm doing everybody patting you on the back. Oh, Girl, you you boss, you the you a boss, you da 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 da. But yet God is saying to you, but will you go to Samaria? And listen, in all of your bossness, it will not compare to the glory that He wants to reveal in you, to you, and through you. Hmm. And how many have gotten caught up? And being a boss, being a, what do they call men? They call, they call them women bosses now, which is a male term. I don't know. Y'all help me out. Now, I, I ain't out there like that. I don't know. Old days, they call them hustlers. I, I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> you know, those, those types of things are happening in forfeiting. Uh, really where God wants to, and you don't, you don't ever reach your full potential. Does that make sense to you? You may have materialism and all those things, but the potential on the inside you haven't reached because um, you won't get the capacity that you need in order to really do what God intends for your life to do. Come on, Pastor Sam. Or like, isn't that like an unto you uh, when you don't have the capacity it's like you're underdeveloped mm -hmm. 
and you and you won't allow because that's what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit is there to develop you. Is there to enlighten your understanding? Is there to to perfect you? To mature you? To strengthen you in your inner man? To stir up the gifts on the inside of you? You know what I'm saying? Help you to understand the gift that God gave you. Um you know what I'm saying? To 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 develop your faith. That you can go from faith to faith. Okay, because that's what Jude 20 tells us. Praying in the Holy Ghost develops or 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 or, or causes our most holy faith to come. Yes. Okay. And then some personal development is a requirement as well. Well, this is all this is all personal because this is about who you're becoming as a person now. Brother Dean said authenticity. Now it's about who you becoming as a person. And now you have enough capacity as a person to to handle to you know uh an assignment, handle uh going to Samaria, um uh, uh going and dealing with the loss that you know there's people pastor sam they won't come out except someone like a pastor samantha go after them you know what i'm saying your experience your wisdom your revelation your grace you know some say people mother carruthers that 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 they ain't they ain't gonna get it unless you go after them you know your generation there's still many in your generation they ain't saved some go to church and they ain't saved. Religious, but ain't saved. You know what I'm saying? In every generation, we have those things. Okay? And 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 some, they're only going to be reached if you reach them. Okay? Or someone like you. I'm not putting God in a box that if, if you don't do it, because he'll raise up somebody else. But listen, if you ain't necessary, you ain't next. You're not necessary. You're not next. If God can't assign you to something, someone, some place, then you become unnecessary. Uh oh. And becoming unnecessary is not a good place to be. Because now you're forfeiting purpose. And whatever doesn't have purpose has no reason to exist. And purpose isn't about what you want to do. It's about what God created you to do. Does that make sense? Yes. So now we're going back to capacity again. You got to begin understanding the capacity that he's He's, he's placed in, in you. Okay, and there's more. You don't peak and crest in God. There's always more. There's always more. There's always more. There's always more. Wow. Bishop. The faith you had last year ain't good enough for this year. Somebody said there's always more. The successes you've had, you know, up until today, forget about them. <laughs> There's more ahead of you. There's more things to be done. There's more souls to win. There's more ministry to be done. There's, there's, you understand what I'm saying? Read John 3.16 again. There's more to be extracted. You know, it's what I preached in Togo, and I've preached this in a way I've never preached it before. Harder than I've ever preached it before. John 3, 16 through 18. There was an extraction for the people of Togo. Definitely, there was a whole nother level of that gospel right there that they needed to hear. And because I was willing, 
Come on, to allow the Holy Ghost to extract it. Bishop, oh my yes. God. Yes. Um, I'm going back on what Monique was saying, and it's tying in what you're talking about right now. Uh, when she said you asked her the question about teaching. Mm hmm. So that lets us know evangelism sometimes is just asking a question. It is. Which would be considered as a poking. <laughs> it is. So you have to understand sometimes that poking would be painful. And then sometimes that poking will is like charging you. Mm -hmm. My God. And, and so, oh my God today. So when you think about that poking that charges you, it's a sensitive subject when the question was asked. Mm. But it could also be some pain in there too. But pain is part of healing. Say it if again. you were never poked, if you were never poked and touched it, you wasn't be able to be stretched or go to the next level. So you won't be in that place where you get stuck in the middle. That question had to be asked. Yeah. That's considered as poking. So that tells us right there, hallelujah, glory to God. We need to embrace poking. Because <laughs> if we just look at it as it's just a painful thing, we won't embrace it. Yeah. And you'll never go to the next level because yeah. you're looking at it from the pain side. That yeah. hurt. Yeah. But you needed to be charged. Yeah. It had to be touched. It was a sensitive matter. So it was sensitive to the touch. Well, it had to be touched so God could deal with your sensitive, your sensitivity or the pain in the matter. Yeah. My God today. Mm -mm -mm. And, and so then so also tell us they're going to require us to do some intentional uh, intentional poking. Poking, yeah. Intentionally poke them. Yeah. Intentionally ask the question. You yeah. know it's a painful matter because they already feel like, I can't do this I ain't equipped for that. Because mm, when you asked me to do that message on the mother, that was right. a sensitive matter. Yeah. That was a poking. Yeah. And it stretched to me. Yeah. But it was something that had to be taken place because healing was in it. My God, today, my and God. It in, and it enlarged your capacity. Yes, it did. Mm, my God, today. That's all I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is, can he touch you? Can he make a request of you? Can, can he make a request of you? Mm -hmm. And so this requires us, us elevating. You can't listen to the many voices. You can't listen to that ain't God when it's very God. Who would have told a man to go down from glory to enter into a place, go down in the hell, you know, come on, be crucified, hang on that cross, nails driven through his hands and his feet, thorns of a crown of thorns on your head, you laughed at and mocked and all the different types of things, knowing you're going to die. Come on, with a promise. Now, he ain't never died before. Knowing that he's going to, with a promise that he's going to be resurrected after three days. So God loved him so much. Come on now, and his love for us. He said, I tell you what, I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you see that I'm a man of my word. I'm gonna let you call Lazarus back to life. And you're gonna see that I'm a man of my word, so you don't have to be afraid to die. No, <laughs> I got Lazarus up, you know I'll get you up too. And that's part of the thing about this evangelism piece, too, as well. You got to know, well, God was merciful to me. So the more you recognize and become conscious of how merciful he is to you, you ought to be merciful to people. 
Come on now. He was kind to you. You ought to be kind to people. He loved you. You ought to love people. He loved you when you was in your mess. You ought to love people when they in their mess. Hmm? He was kind to you, amen, when you was had a bad attitude and this and then the other, but yet with love and kindness did he draw you. Come on. That requires you having some capacity because it's a natural reaction to pop off. Unless you have what? Capacity. Y'all talk to me. We 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 didn't hear a lot. Y'all open up. LaQuisha, Brother Dean, Gloria, you at work. Minister Deborah, come on. Talking about lukewarmness. Well, Bishop, I will say this. I'm on the speaker, so hopefully y'all can hear me. I really okay. enjoyed everything everyone says, but it's the the value of the poking for me. Once you understand the value in him poking you, the value, he just talks about that, that he loved, but the value, even in evangelizing, as you, as you all were saying earlier, when you understand the value of what we have, mm. it's you don't want to contain it. You want to evangelize. You want to go out and tell everybody. You you want to, if it saved me, it can save you. I was once just like you, you know? And also, um, just adding to what everybody said, when you see someone in a similar situation that you were in, identifying those that you could potentially be assigned to, when you've come through something that you're watching somebody, you know, go through, and your testimony is also another way of evangelizing to someone Say so I used to do exactly what you're doing and look what God done for me. Yeah. You know, so I think that's another way of evangelizing. This is good. This is good. What he brought you out to was what he's called you to. You know? And we have to be okay with those things and not be tolerant and acceptant. You know, know that this gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Can he assign you? Can he give you an assignment? And I also say this too, when it comes to going back to the book, the tongues of um, praying in the Holy Ghost, or the gift of the I will say this, unless you are actively play, praying in the Holy Ghost, it will feel like you don't have the capacity. Yeah. Like, it'll feel like the assignments are too much, God, like everything you call me to, I got to do this, I got to do that, I got to do this, I got to do that. You will feel like you don't have the capacity to complete the assignment. But yeah. like you said, when you're on the plane, you can pray in the Holy Ghost just like that. And then you receive grace to continue. Yeah. So, and praying in tongues daily, you know, continuously, actively, you'll be surprised at how you're handling things that you were just not able to handle. This is excellent. And that is why it has to be something that we practice, that we do as a part of our lifestyles, that we don't become lukewarm, that we do evangelize and listen, Again, if we're not evangelizing, we become lukewarm. You can't get settled into not uh, not being in an assignment, not 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 uh, knowing or, or seeing God bear fruit through your life. You know, you're not being poked. <laughs> you you you've accepted, you know. Uh, whatever you've accepted hurt, you've accepted this and the other. You make excuses rather than going into the secret place. Rather than as as Minister Laquisha said, rather than praying in the Holy Spirit daily, consistently, to where you don't hurt no more. And now when you get poked, 
the thing that used to hurt you, you minister to. So now you start, you start, you start eliminating uh, the things that's causing uh, destruction in the lives of people and society and in families and these different types of things. That makes sense to you? But that's called becoming a laborer. Harvest is plenteous. Laborers are few. Harvest is plenteous. Laborers are few. The harvest is plenteous. Laborers are few. Deacon Terry went back to opportunity. How many opportunities out there that if we were prepared that we could minister this gospel to a person or two people that would transform them, that cause them to be assets rather than you just label them as a liability? Does that make sense to you? See, you were once a liability to God. And if you're lukewarm, you're becoming a liability to God. I'm not saying that. This is what the scripture says. Either you hot or you cold. If you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. Okay? What that means is I can't count on you, so I'm not going to mention, <laughs> come on now, I'm not going to, not to a, assign you to anything, okay? You're not in the roster anymore. I'm not putting you in the game. And then what you do is you sit back and you begin to to rot, you begin to die slow. Does this make sense to you? Yeah. This is good. Somebody clap your hands for the Lord tonight. So let's start right there. That's about our time. It's, it's 11 after 8. Uh, we didn't get into, well, we kind of touched it on a little bit, but that was something that stood out while we were in Africa about being lukewarm. Okay. And um, we we have to address, address it. We got to uh, deal with it. And the other thing is um, some of your, some of what God may assign to you People don't understand it. People don't know whether it be a place, whether it be a people, whether it be a person. Why would you go all the way? Why would you fly all halfway around the world to minister to someone, you know, who might not even accept or receive uh, what you have to give? Because that's what God assigned us to do. And he said you would do it. And I've put the capacity. I've put the grace. I've, I've done this, I'm putting the love in it for you. Does that make sense? Is it everybody that would take, you know, 20 hour flights and go minister the gospel to people you don't know, never met, but they were waiting on you to get there? As I said, Minister Samantha, when I was ministering on that radio with a potential 1 million listeners, I felt a pull on me like I hadn't felt in the United States. You understand what I'm saying? And there was some extraction out of John 3, 16 through 18. You know what I'm saying to you? And that was because there were a people that were waiting to hear that voice, the voice of the Holy Spirit. And what if I would have said, no, nah, God, I ain't going, I ain't going over there. I'm not saying he wouldn't have used somebody else, but he wants to use you. He wants to do that, but you got to have capacity. And this is how we make a difference in the world. You've been called to make a difference. Not on the sideline, not just dosy doing through whatever's comfortable to you. No, he, he'll make it uncomfortable for you. Okay. <laughs> Come on, y'all know I don't like being hot. <laughs> Come on. 
and mama, the power go out, no AC running, it was hot. <laughs> but yet God will grace me, and God knows I don't like being hot. And and my mother can tell you, Ashley can tell you, I don't like being hungry. I get hungry, I get hangry. Come on now, and then, you know, you don't know, see nothing decent to eat for 10, 11 days. Come on now. You do have an appetite, and then whatever, and, and please, y'all, I'm so appreciative for every effort that everybody makes, you know, but there's a different culture. There's a different culture. So what's exciting them, we're like, I, I don't want that. I'm like, my grits, I don't want it. <laughs> My mom like, John, I don't want it. <laughs> so God has a sense of humor. But then he gives you the capacity. But like LaQuisha said, you, you got to pray in the Holy Spirit. You got to uh, make yourself available. You got to count it an honor when he allows you to be poked. We counted the sheep for the slaughter all the day long. But there's a reward when you elevate and go into the secret place and identify what's really going on and then come back and speak to it. And he uses you as an instrument to transform a life that needs to be transformed. That makes sense to you? Mm -hmm. That's the work of the ministry. Only transformed lives can transform a life. Capacity. Being lukewarm. Ask yourself the question, am I lukewarm? Is my capacity low? Do I have holes in my spirit? I've leaked out. I'm not containing anything anymore that gives, brings me substance that I can identify something in someone and speak to it, minister to it, whatever it may be, that their life is transformed so we can all make a difference everywhere we go. Because our, our main purpose is to know God and to make him known everywhere we go and everything that we do. Right? Come on, let's clap our hands tonight. So ask the question, am I lukewarm? Do I have holes in my spirit? Or is my capacity low? Ask him that question. Because when you when you when you get full, you, when you when your capacity is where it needs to be, our love, our joy, our peace, our kindness, our patience, our long suffering, you look at people differently. You look at situations differently. You look at things differently. Okay, some things you count as dumb. That stuff ain't even important anymore. Make me of no reputation. You get out of pride. Make me no reputation, Lord, that you might be glorified. Ooh. Father, I thank you. You've helped us tonight. You've opened up our understanding. Our capacity has increased. And because our capacity has increased, we say to you tonight, fill us up, Lord. Fill us up till we want no more. Refill us all over again. Enlighten our understanding. Help us to embrace truth. Help us to embrace purpose. Help us to, to become the assets you want us to become to you. And God, help us to forget those things which are behind us and press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. We know that this is, without, this is not without presenting ourselves as a living sacrifice. I know we know that this is without us not renewing our mind. We have to renew our mind that we not be conformed to this world so we can be transformed by the renewing of our minds 
so we can show that which is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Help us, Lord God, to allow us to see people, to see places, to see things like you see them. Count those things that are important to you to be important, those things that are not important to you to be of non-importance. So we love you, we appreciate you, and we thank you for those things. In Jesus' name, fill us up, God. Enlighten our understanding. Amen. Glory to God. Let's clap our hands and say, I receive it from you tonight, God. Yeah. Amen, amen, amen. Whew. Glory. Glory, this is good. Listen, um, I need your help. I need your help. We we are still $400 short of the Togo budget. And so if you'll help me, if 10 of us were just so $40 is wiped out. So I'm just making a request. Uh, if we can do that, it's done. Togo is in the books. Okay. Um, so we got a few more days. We have until the 10th. Um, but let me know if you can. If you can, do it tonight. We'll get those things up and out. We'll get the budget for Togo done. Togo's on the book. Everything else has been taken care of. Amen. But we did have that left over. So I'm one, so we don't need 10. We only need nine. Okay, so if nine of us will do that. Dick and Terry got his hand up. Mother Irma got her hand up. Pastor Sam got her hand up. Okay, Stephanie got her hand up. So there's one, two, three, four, uh, five. Tanya, thank you, Sister Tanya. You so so kind. Uh, Brother Dean, done. So those things are happening, and uh, I think we're we're about almost there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Gloria, thank you. I love you. Uh, I think that's eight or. How many is that, Stephanie? Did you count them? That's eight. Okay, that's eight. And did you count me? Okay, so that's eight. So we just got two more. So uh, do that, and and God will will help us. Okay, we had that wiped out. You guys are amazing. See how simple that was. Amen. Somebody say grace. That's the grace of God. That's the grace of God on the assignment. Okay, get in your assignment. Grace. That's right, Amari. <laughs> That's grace. That's grace. That's grace. Okay. Um, we'll be on to the next one. Uh, Kenya is going very well. Pictures are coming out. You guys may have seen some of them. Okay. The, the, the foundation is being laid. They're getting ready to do the floor. And walls are getting ready to come up. And that will be the first floor being done. So... That's being worked on and teams are being built for November trip. Yes, Mother Irma, I see your hand. Bishop, is that, uh, I can do that on Giblify as well? Yeah. Yes, ma'am, you can. What do I put it under? Uh, it, if it tells you a note, just put Togo. Togo, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, I'm going to start recording here, but Father, I want to pray first. Oh, Father, I thank you for the seeds. I thank you for our partnership. I thank you for us embracing what you said about Words of Faith Church. We will go from city to city, state to state, and nation to nation. I thank you. We're opening doors. We're cutting pathways, and generations are going to be impacted. Nations are, are is being impacted. Your glory is being revealed. I pray your blessing on the seed that is making this happen. The scripture tells in Ephesians 6 that whatsoever we make happen for somebody else, you make happen for us. So I thank you that there's no lack amongst us. God, every project, every need that we may have, uh, you are the supplier of all our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So when we make what's on your heart happen, God, those things that are in our heart that needs to happen, you're making happen too. So I praise you that men are given into our bosoms. I thank you for favor, discounts, rebates, checks in the mail, debt cancellation, financial miracles, new jobs, promotions and raises and clients and, and uh, supernatural 
supernatural manifestations, creative ideas and witty inventions. I thank you for those things right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as we do the work of the ministry, the work of the kingdom. Thank you, there's nothing missing, there's nothing lacking, there's nothing broken. And most of all, God, crown us with wisdom and continue to give us capacity to love on your people, to minister to your people, to transform lives through the power of this gospel. God, we will love the unlovable. God, we'll go where you call the goal. We'll receive the assignment to a people, to a place, to things, oh God, that you are glorified. Make us of no reputation. God, us not making thinking more highly of ourselves than we ought. Make us of no reputation, God, that you would be glorified. And God, help us to see the end of people rather than seeing where they are in the middle. God, we don't judge people in the middle, God. Help us see the finished product. Help us be a part of finishing the work. Help us be a part of the restoration. Help us be a part of the healing. Help us be a part of the delivering, Lord God, as we open our mouth, as we yield our life, as we sow the seed, O oh God, of this gospel. As we invest time, God, I thank you for the fruit. I thank you for the return on these things, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Y'all agree with that? Hallelujah. Then give the Lord a hand of praise and thank him. Thank him. Th I mean, thank him for real. Know that your harvest is here. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Your assignment is upon you. Say, this is the best days of my life. This is the greatest time of harvest. Okay, it's harvest time. It really, really is. It really is. It may not look like what you look like. It may not be where you think it is. But I guarantee you, if you will obey, if you will Say, okay, God, I see that, I accept that, and, and do what God wants. I guarantee you, you're going to see the harvest. It's going to be a blessing to you, okay? Hallelujah. How, how, do, a, how do I go to a nation that, that uh, uh, has little, but I come back with, with a custom, a custom uh, African attire. I come back with two pair of brand new Italian suit, shoes that I had. I couldn't even give them. I wanted to pay them for it. They wouldn't let me. I didn't ask for them. They wanted to be a blessing. Does that make sense to you? Thank you for coming. Thank you for sowing the gospel on the night. Thank you for taking time up with us. Thank you for caring enough that you sacrifice. Thank your church. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. You might not read where you sow, but you'll always reap what you sow. So love, so kindness. So where you need to go, where you want to go. All right? Amen. Listen, that's our time, guys. I'm going to let you get out of here. Any, listen, let me start recording. <laughs>